Financial competition is a form of a market structure. There are uh, four main ones that we uh, talk about. The first one is monopoly. Monopoly is when there's only one firm in the market. And um, then if you look at the number of firms that exist in the market, that would help you differentiate between the different market structures. So oligopoly has a few firms. Monopolistic competition has many firms. And perfect competition has large number of firms that exist in this market. Now, the other um, features are no market power. And that really means that it doesn't matter if you exist or not in the market. There are identical products. You can't really differentiate between the products of different firms. They're all substitutes. And there's no restriction to enter the market. Right. What is revenue price into quantity? The market price is given as $25. How much revenue, how much do I make if I sell one unit of this good? Then the total revenue is 25 times 1, which gives you 25. If you make two goods and each one sells for 25, the total revenue that you make is 25 into 2, which is 50. Right. Now, if you keep doing that, our total revenue comes to be 25 into 375, 25 into 400, and so on. So this is how you calculate the total revenue for this firm or for... Now, we have the total revenue and we just need to plot this. And this is what your total revenue function looks like, all right? Given that the price was 25, what do you mean by marginal revenue, right? So you produce the first coffee, unit of coffee, right? You produce the first cup of coffee and you sold it. And then you produce a second cup of coffee, yeah? Now, you want to know what is the revenue that you make from this second cup of coffee. The total revenue when you sold two cups was $50, right? So how much did you make only from the second good? Well, it was how much you made from one. And what is the extra that you made when you sell the second cup? Now, how much is that? 25, right? So the increase in your total revenue when you produce the second cup is 25. So that's your marginal revenue. Now, what is the total revenue from three cups of coffee? 75. But marginal revenues, how much did you make from this third cup of coffee? And how much did you make? Well, it was you were making $50 from two cups. The third cup gave you this extra amount. And what is this extra amount? 75 minus 50 gives you 25. This is how you'll calculate the marginal revenues. So you'll calculate it for the fourth cup, fifth cup, and sixth cup, and so on. So really, what the marginal revenue ends up being is 25, right? So if you draw this marginal revenue graph, it's a straight line, and it's equal to the price. It's equal to the price that was determined by the market. And this is really what you mean by the firm being a price taker. and so you have a, a cafe and it's called Arifi Cafe. What do you need to set up this cafe? You need, first of all, a place. So let's say we rent this place and we are paying a weekly rent. We need some furniture and we need a coffee machine. And let's say we purchase this and we are paying weekly installments on this furniture and a coffee machine as well. So this is the one time setup cost, right? So you set this up and you're paying these costs. Now, um, say we had the rent was 100, furniture is 50, and the cost of the machine is 50. So what is the total fixed cost that you're paying is $200. Now, fixed in the sense that it's the one-time uh, setup cost that you're paying. Right? Now, what is the variable cost? Well, you're making coffee, and you want to know, you want to decide whether you want to open this uh, restaurant, uh, cafe. So if you open the cafe, you need to have lights running you need to have maybe the air conditioning running or the heating running you need to you're spending some electricity uh, when you open this cafe the second thing you need is uh, ingredients to make this coffee right so you're thinking about coffee beans milk sugar so everything that goes into making that one cup of coffee the cost of those ingredients and then you need to use these ingredients in the machine to produce coffee and the machine is also using electricity so you really have Variable cost has cost of electricity plus all the ingredients that you use. It's called variable cost. The reason why it's referred to as a variable cost is completely because of the def definition of variable. What does it mean? Variable, it changes. So if you produce one cup of coffee, you are incurring this variable cost. If you put produce two cups of coffee, does this cost increase? Yeah, it does, because you're spending extra 
on the ingredients as well as electricity on the machine and keeping the cafe open. This is variable because it varies according to how much you produce. What would be your variable cost if you produced no coffee at all and you did not open your cafe? It would be zero because you are not using electricity, you are not making coffee, you are not spending money on ingredients and hence variable cost. So now we are going to think about uh, cost functions. Let's just um, say when we produce one cup of coffee, we hire one person labor and let's say the wages for that one guy is eight dollars and you're paying him eight dollars right the cost of electricity is seven dollars the cost of ingredients to make that one cup of coffee is five dollars so here we have all the variable costs spell out spelled out right labor electricity and ingredients so to make the uh to make two cups of coffee you're still just hiring one guy and this is the cost of labor so wage is eight dollars so it's eight into one that's how much you're paying for labor, electricity, and ingredients, and so on. So let's just have a cost function for uh, nine cups of coffee, and that's how it increases. As you can see, after I make the sixth cup of coffee, I hire, we hire, well, Arifi Cafe hires uh, another unit of labor. So it hires two people to work at the shop, to work at the cafe. And if each guy is paid eight bucks, you're paying them $16, right? So, the cost of electricity is increasing, the cost of labor is increasing, of course the cost of ingredients is increasing. You need more milk and coffee beans to produce nine cups. So this is your uh, cost, cost and uh, so you can calculate the total variable cost and all you're doing is you're just adding up the cost. Seven, 5 plus 7 plus 8 gives you 21, 8 plus 8 plus 14 gives you 30. So we've just added this up and this is our total variable cost. Well, let's just think about what the fixed cost is, right? The cost of the machine, 50. Does it matter if you produce one cup of coffee or nine cups of coffee? No, you still need the co a coffee machine. So the cost of the machine hasn't changed. The rent, well, you're paying the rent whether you produce one coffee or whether you make nine coffees. What about furniture? Same thing. And hence the term fixed cost. It, these are fixed. They don't change as you produce more or less coffee. So you have fixed cost and uh, total fixed cost would be adding up all the fixed cost and in this case is 50, 150 plus 50 gives you 200 as your fixed cost. And this fixed cost is the same irrespective of how much you produce. So what is your total cost? It's total variable cost plus total fixed cost gives you total cost. That's your cost function, right? Now I want to talk about uh, what we had before. We had the marginal revenue, right? And now we also have marginal cost function. Now let me ask you, uh, if given this, given that uh, when you produce uh, one to nine goods, this is what the marginal revenue is. Well, again, what is marginal revenue? Let's look at uh, quantity six. When you produce the sixth cup of coffee, the sixth cup of coffee gives you an extra revenue of 25. That's what your marginal revenue is. But when you produce sixth cup of coffee, what is the extra cost? That's your marginal cost. And marginal cost in this case is 18. How did you calculate the marginal cost? Well, 275 minus 275 minus 257 is your marginal cost. So would you produce this sixth cup of coffee? Well, the increase in cost, the marginal cost is 18, but the revenue you make is 25. You make more money from the sixth cup of coffee than it costs you to produce the good. So would you produce sixth cup of coffee? Well, yeah, making more money than you're spending on it. Would you make, would you uh, produce the seventh good as well? The seventh cup of coffee? Yeah. The increase in cost is 22, the revenue is 25. Would you produce the eighth cup of coffee? Well, you, when you produce the eighth cup of coffee, it gives you a revenue of 25, but the cost incurred is 28. So would you make the 28th, sorry, would you make the eighth cup of coffee? Nope. 
so how did you decide how many cups of coffees to produce well where your marginal revenue was equal to marginal cost so if I was to draw this marginal uh, cost function that we just had uh, and the marginal revenue we already know is 25 I just I just drew this marginal cost function given the numbers we had earlier how much would the firm produce well we don't have a whole number here but it's say 7.5 again what was fixed cost and variable cost how much would you incur in cost if you decided not to open your cafe this week there's no variable cost because you're not producing any coffee you're not making any coffee you're not opening up the shop you're still paying the fixed cost you're still paying the rent the weekly rent you're still paying the cost of furniture and cost of the machine what do you mean by short run in the long run let's just think about this short and the long of it how long would it take you to exit this business you would need to stop sell the furniture sell the machine and get out of this uh, rental contract well probably a year because that's how long the contract was so for a year you had to pay this fixed cost so if it's one year in this case then one year is referred to as the long run and anything that's less than a year would be referred to as the short run so if you're talking about a week that's a short run if you're referring to a month that's a short run if you're referring to six months that's a short run so the long run is defined as when nothing is up nothing is fixed you can get rid of your business so suppose um, you have this cafe and we are thinking about the short run and in this example the short run is one week so uh, you have to decide whether to keep your cafe open or closed for this one week how much cost do you incur well variable cost cost of opening the uh, cafe and all the fixed cost which is two hundred dollars what if you close the cafe well that's what we refer to as shutting down in the short run so if you shut down in the short run what is your variable cost is zero now suppose I told you that if you kept the rest kept the cafe open for a, for a week total revenue that you would make was 150 for this week and the variable cost that you would incur that means given how much coffee you'll end up selling the variable cost was 120 this week would you open or shut down your cafe this week so now you're going to ask well if I kept it open what is the total cost 200 which I have to pay plus 120 so total cost is 320 and what's your total revenue well again I'm giving a number to you which is 150 so what is your loss 170 what if you shut down in the short run the total cost is fixed cost total revenue you don't make any revenue you don't open so what's your loss 200 200 if you shut down in the short run your loss is 200 if you're open in the short run despite the fact that your total revenue is only 150 and your total cost is 320 you're making a loss but you're making a loss of 170 your loss is smaller if you open your cafe than if you kept it closed what does that mean that means that it's profitable for you to have your cafe open as long as your total revenue is higher than your total variable cost not your total cost but your total variable cost and why is that because if you're making 150 in your revenue you're recovering all your variable cost which is 120 plus an extra 30 dollars which will pay for your fixed cost yeah 